Today, I am forgetting everything about programming and I'm going to pretend I am an absolute beginner to see if I can build an app using only AI. I'm going to pay for and use the most hyped AI tools in the market right now. Vault.new, V0, Replit Agent and Lovable to see how far I can go and to see if it's possible to build something actually useful just by writing prompts. I'm tired of clickbait titles saying it's over for developers and that we are going to be replaced every time a new AI model comes out. And it sucks to think that beginners learning to code are getting discouraged by marketing campaigns that say there is no point on learning to code paid for by companies trying to sell them a prompting course or a master chat GPT book. I actually think that right now is the best time to be a programmer or to learn to code and that we are about to enter a golden era for developers. More on that later. So what are we building? I know that if I ask for something like a to-do list app or a landing page, the AI will be able to give me working code. But that is pointless since I could find that code on my own Googling anyways. What we are going to try to build is an app that a developer would be hired to do. An app that has many moving parts. Something more advanced than a to-do list app. We will try to build an investment app where users can create an account, look for stocks and add them to a watch list. It isn't simple, but it's also not hard. It is an app that will take me a day or two of work. The first tool is Repolit Agent. It costs $25 a month or $180 a year. It's not cheap. So I go to the Repolit Agent website and I just basically write down that I want to make an app to track stocks and I want the user to be able to create an account with email and password and I want them to be able to search for stocks add them to the watch list and I want them to be able to go to a page where they can see information about the stocks with charts and pricing as well as information of the company. Then I click a button that says improve prompt and that is going to I guess make my prompt more specific for the model which I think it's pretty cool because I, I suck at explaining things in English and I guess we just wait more and more for everything to be created. It is finally done. It's all right. It's not bad. Let's register and see if it works. Okay, so email and password and register. Oh, confirm password as well. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, register. There we go. It looks like it actually is working for real. Oh, all right. I want to try to log in. Click login. And boom, error. Remember, I am pretending to be a beginner. I don't know anything about code. And I guess we'll just wait more. Okay, and we can log in, fantastic. But before I say, okay, I'm going to search for .NET, Cloudflare stock, and as you can see, another error. So I say, I'm able to register and log in, but I can't search for stocks. Okay, now I have to log in again, see if it works, click login. Okay, search for a stock, and it didn't find Cloudflare stock, that's weird. I say, I can't search for stocks like .NET. Okay, .NET, and now as you can see, it is saying that it found Cloudflare.net, but I don't believe it, so I'm gonna go to Stock API and look at that. There is no Stock API. It is literally just returning the most common stocks, and that's not what I want. So I'm gonna say, I want to be able to search for any stock. I'm gonna say to use an API like Y Finance. Let's see if it works. It looks like it deleted those hard-coded stocks. That's cool. Okay, and now let's just try to search one more time for .NET or Coinbase, whatever and still it doesn't work. Oh God, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It cannot search for stocks. So I modify the code manually, all right? So now let's see if we can keep going or see what else it built. Okay, now I can search for .NET, but there is another error in the watch list and I can add .NET, Cloudflare and Netflix to my watch list. And here, oh God, there is another error. So I'm gonna just copy this error and I'm gonna paste it there. And we're going to just wait until it fixes the error. Oh God, and after waiting and waiting and waiting, come on, man, I'm getting bored. I guess now it's being saved in the database. Okay, so he made a chart with Matplot. Okay, not bad. And it got information about the company, hopefully using the API. Okay, not bad. Now let's try with v 0 dev a product made by Vercel that is $20 per month. I'll paste the prompt that says to make this application using Next.js, using Tailwind and using Yahoo Finance. Okay, now V0 is going to think and is going to hopefully create a Next.js application for us. All right, and away we go. And oh God, I hate waiting. But yeah, let's just wait and see how long this takes. I have a good vibe about this one. I hope it works. I think it's gonna work well. 
is completed. All right, nice. So we get a login and sign up forms. I don't think they work because V0 doesn't provide databases. Repolit does. I don't think V0 provides databases. So I'm going to click sign up. Nothing happened. And oops. So I'm going to click fix with V0. Okay. Uh, let's see what the problem is. Okay. So it looks like it's done. Let's go to dashboard again and another error. What is the problem? What's the problem in dashboard? Dashboard page weird. Very, very weird. Okay, I'm gonna click on retry just to see if we can just get a better response. It is now replacing some stuff in the code. I don't think it's gonna work. I think this is a waste of time. Okay, here we go again. Let's now go to dashboard. And still, we have an error. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna copy the prompt and I'm gonna create a new project because maybe there is something wrong there. Okay, I'll just create a new project completely just using the same prompt to see if this thing is going to actually work. Okay, and it did. It created almost the same thing again. We're gonna go to slash dashboard. It has some stocks. I don't think they are real. Let me search for Cloudflare. Nope, they're not real. All right, I'm gonna click on Apple. And there we go. We have a chart, I guess. Yeah, this chart is useless. So it's clearly not doing it with real data. Now I'm going to say, I want to be able to search for a stock using its symbol. Okay, so it knows it has to use Yahoo Finance NPM package. Oh my God, it's just rewriting things. I don't think it did anything with Yahoo Finance whatsoever. Let's go to dashboard. And oh God, this same error again. All right, done. We're done with V0, done. Next, let's move on to the next one. So the next one is vault.new. My hopes are actually pretty high for this one because they have a super base integration that I'm actually very curious to try. Vault.new has a free plan and paid plans where you prepay for tokens and they start at $20 per month. All right, so I'm going to use the same prompt that I used before and we just wait and see how it goes. Starting a next JS project. It is installing Radix, which is a requirement for chat CN, I guess. Okay, it created the auth page. All right, a bunch of user state. All right, it is now creating the dashboard page. It is now creating the symbol page. Cool. I think this is it. I think this one is going to be it. Yep. And we go to the homepage and it says start prompting. Okay, so I guess it didn't make an index page. That's fine. Let's go to slash dashboard. Okay, I can search. Yes, I can search for stocks. I will search for .NET and error. Error searching for stocks. Okay, let's try to fix it. Oh God, it's gonna rewrite everything. Okay, hopes down, hopes down. My hopes were high, now they're down. And there we go. So now I can search for that. Nope, it cannot fix the error. It cannot fix the error. It keeps, it, it keeps saying it knows what the error is and now it's rewriting the page again. Done. Okay, couldn't do it. Let's go for Lovable. I want to believe Lovable works. Now, Lovable also has a free trial and their pro plans also start at $20 a month. Okay, so I copy paste the same prompt I gave to everybody. All right, and let's press enter and go. Now, they all look very similar, you see? It's all the same thing. I guess they're just wrapping the same AI model. They're all using Claude, I guess. Oh, at least Lovable knows that it has to install Yahoo Finance too. Cool. All right, it's creating an app TSX that isn't a Next.js application, which is okay because I said make an application, not Next.js, because I think they cannot handle Next.js. Okay, it's creating every page. So we have dashboard, that's cool. Maybe this is it, this is it, maybe. And also they have an integration with Superbase that I really want to try. Yes, let's do it. Okay, there is an error. It is saying the app encountered an error. Build unsuccessful, why? Okay, try to fix it. Okay, and there we go, look at that. We have a sign in and a, oh, what happened? Oh. Okay, we have a index page that disappeared. Huh? It's gone? What's going on? I don't know what to do. I'm gonna say I can't see anything. Oh my God. Okay, here you can just finish. I'm gonna say like, okay, it didn't work. Whatever, done. Thank you, Lovable. Thank you, whatever. I honestly expected this video to turn out differently. Replit agent was the best. 
and even then it builds something no actual user can use. Maybe a personal tool, but going from a Streamlit app to something user facing is a very, very long road. The experience itself also sucked. I just sat around and waited and waited while the tools were trying to fix errors on a loop, only to fail and waste the credits that I paid for. I also realized that using these tools killed the joy of building things because I didn't actually build anything. I realized I was paying money to become a code reviewer for AI and I hate reviewing code. There is no way I'm going to be paying money to spend my time debugging the box that I paid the AI to write. You could say that I wasn't fair and I was too general with the instructions to the AI. You could say that I should have broken the project step by step and said something like, make a form and center it or make a button and give it a black background and a white text. But if I have to go into that much detail and be so specific, I may as well just write the code. It takes me less time and zero dollars to write the couple of lines of CSS required to center a form. Compared to the time and money it takes me to write down those instructions, wait for a response and potentially babysit the AI when it makes mistakes. On the bright side, this result only gives me more confidence on my opinion that we are entering a golden era for developers. One, because you could say that these tools make developers more productive, which I guess it's true. If I wrote more technical prompts and more specific tasks, I guess all those tools would have done a decent job. Second, in a more optimistic point of view, I believe that there will be people that aren't as impatient as me and they will actually sit and try to babysit the AI until they have a working prototype of something. And that prototype may grow into a startup that will need to hire actual developers to maintain it, fix bugs and add new features. And third, compared to the past, the amount of code and the speed at which it is being generated thanks to these tools is insane. As we know, more code means more bugs, means more developer jobs, so developers also win there. To conclude, I think that with AI, developers are getting either more productive, developers are getting hired to maintain or extend MVPs made possible by AI, or they are being brought in to fix bugs introduced by AI. So don't listen to the hype, you are going to be all right. If anything, you used to be Tony Stark and thanks to AI, you became Iron Man. Bye.